Hi everybody and welcome to another encouragement from the Psalms and today we're in Psalm 137 which is by the rivers of Babylon and so on um, but it's iconic and a very important Psalm as you know and there's so much could be said from it but I'm just going to say a couple of things because of time constraints but there's two things that I want to encourage you in that we must not forget how to weep and we must not forget how to sing. We must not forget how to weep and we must not forget how to sing. What do I mean by that? Well, by the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. So we are rooted in history at a moment where Israel is in exile or else reflecting on exile to Babylon. Uh, where a sort of small group of people were dragged off, uh, the best of the best were dragged off to Babylon, lots of people were killed, lots of people were left at home, and it's exile and oppression and tyrannical rule by the Babylonian Empire. And here we see people that are in Babylon and they're they're down by these rivers like the Euphrates and the Tigris and all these sorts of places and they're down there. Now why are they down there? Well in, in Acts 16 we, we see that um, when, when Peter wants to, or sorry, when Paul wants to meet the God-fearing people um, in, in Philippi he goes down to the river because people go down to the river to pray and for some of the things that uh, Jewish people do uh, ceremonially they need water so they go down to the water to do that down to the rivers even when they're in Babylon if they want to worship down by the river to pray and there's another song for you and as they that's a theory that's possible and as they go down there to, to sort of worship um, they actually end up sitting down and weeping. Sitting down and weeping. Now, I want you to realise that, first and foremost, there's something beautiful about when people, even when locked in exile, are still worshipping. You know, like when, when Daniel, even when he's told, no prayer allowed, he continues to pray three times a day. And here we see the exiles, I think, worshipping, even in the midst of exile. But it actually becomes something different. They're sitting down and they're weeping when they remembered Zion. And I guess I would have always read this and would have always said, my goodness, you know, that's not what the people of God should be doing. They should be singing. They shouldn't be weeping. But I'm really indebted to a um, a uh, minister called Charlie Cleverly, who I've got to know a little bit uh, through new wine things and all the rest of it, um, who talks a lot about lament. And we must not forget that the Psalms have lot, lots and lots and lots in them about lament. And the, the key to authentic uh, Christian discipleship is that we don't pretend. We bring our true feelings into conversation with God. And if you have experienced being dragged away from your homeland and you've seen, you know, children being killed by this oppressive regime, if you've seen, you know, people being violated by these brutal, 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 brutal oppressors, if you've seen all that and, you know, your, your city's been destroyed and all that sort of stuff, a natural human emotion to bubble out of you is not laughing, you know, it's weeping. And these people are weeping, potentially in, in, the, in, the, in the presence of God, in this, in this act of worship, they're weeping. And it's so right to weep in these moments. And why are they weeping? Because there is a gap between their reality and what they believe would be the Lord's will. And it's the gap that we we sense when we pray, um, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's a gap between exile and Zion. There's a gap between those things. 
And if we forget how to weep, we have sort of decided that we belong in Babylon. We've stopped yearning for the what could be and the what was and the what has been lost. And we must not do that. Uh, as Christians, and I, I, you know, I bring this into the, the new covenant now, as Christians, if we don't weep over injustice, if we don't um, hurt because things are not as they should be, we have forgotten that we are not of this world, that we belong to a different kingdom. So we must remember how to weep. Uh, and you know, the driver of prayer um, when you go past intimacy, which is the ultimate driver, should be that dissatisfaction with the world as it is, because we want to see it be as the Lord wants it. And in the midst of a pandemic, you know, I don't want you to forget how to sing, but I also don't want you to forget how to weep and how to worship and bring everything you're feeling in to the presence of God. Bring it all into his presence. Weep before him. You know, and it says, on the willows there we hung up our lyres, that's a, an instrument, for there our captors required of us songs, and our tormentors mirth saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Now folks, let me tell you, there are mockers. There are always mockers. And if there's no human mockers about, there's definitely the demonic mockers. And if there's, uh, there's an ultimate mocker called Satan, the deceiver, and there is always a mocker to those who weep because they want the world to be different than it is. And they want reality to be in line with the Lord's will. There'll always be mockers. And you know, it's true to say, that Jesus was mocked. I'd never noticed this before, but Jesus, well, often in his, his ministry, his earthly ministry, he, he spoke about the fact that he would be mocked. And there's actually three stages, um, which this is a new discovery for me, three stages to that mocking. The first mocking um, in Jesus, as Jesus moves towards the cross, was at the Sanhedrin. They blindfolded Jesus and they whacked him. And they said, right, prophesy who hit you. Prophesy who hit you. They mocked him. And they mocked, in a sense, his kind of divinity there. And his kind of, his, his, even maybe his role as a prophet. Secondly, um, when he was being flogged, you'll know that they put the purple robe on him and the crown of thorns. And they, they mocked his kingship. And they said, hail, king of the Jews. Hail King of the Jews, ironically mocking him. And thirdly, he's mocked on the cross. And I've just taken a little note of this because I just thought it was uh, so, 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 so powerful. Mark 15, the chief priests and teachers of the law mocked him among themselves saying, he saved others, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we might see and believe. And finally, those crucified with Jesus also heaped insults at him. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing him mocked as prophet, mocked as king, and now mocked as saviour. Mocked, mocked, mocked. It would cause you to weep, wouldn't it? But here's the incredible thing. How did Jesus respond to this mocking? By uttering from the cross, Psalm 22. Even on the cross, Jesus sung. Certainly quoted a song, he sung. And we are not just called not to forget how to weep, but we also mustn't forget how to sing. You know, the apostles locked in a prison were able to sing. They were able to sing in the prison, in the, in the belly of that prison. They had things to sing. And this is such an important thing. There's tormentors here as they weep who are saying, oh, sing us one of those lovely songs. And they're saying, you know, they're asking the question in verse four, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? How can we sing 
the Lord's song in a foreign land. And here is, is a key to how you do it. It says, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. The way that we sing is we remember. Okay? The way we sing is we remember. We remember Jerusalem. For, for a New Testament Christian, we remember the cross. We look backwards and we remember and we say, if, if Jesus on that cross doesn't help me sing in the middle of a pandemic, let the, my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth. Let me forget how to play guitar or the organ or the piano. Let me forget how to do it if that's not my highest joy. Look back. And also, it moves to a little bit of an uncomfortable passage, verses 7 to 9, where the psalmist starts to, to look forward to God's judgment that's going to come down on some of the nations who have been complicit or, or indeed the actual oppressors themselves. And there's an uncomfortable bit where, where the psalmist is sort of wishing their little ones to be dashed against rocks, which presumably is linked to the fact that that's probably what Babylon has done to the, the children of, of, of Israel. But you see, the point is that he's looking forward to the day of God's justice. So you see that. How do you sing when you're in the prison? You look back at what you had and you look forward to when God will bring justice. And for the New Testament Christian, although I don't think we pray in this way about our enemies as New Testament Christians following the lead of Jesus who told us to pray for our enemies, what we do though is we look back at the cross in view of God's mercy, okay? Offer ourselves as living sacrifices. Who, 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 that's our spiritual act of worship. We sing because we look back to the cross and we sing as well because we look forward to a day when God will make all things right. Now, folks, I want to encourage you. Bring all that you're feeling into conversation with God and don't forget how to weep. Don't ever 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 just accept babylon weep because there's a there's a distance between what you know of the lord's will and what you're experiencing at the moment weep let it take you to the ground in weeping but also sing as you look back at the cross and as you look forward to the fulfillment of all that god has promised that should enable you to sing even in prison that should enable you to sing even when being flogged or being tormented by Babylonians. I hope that's of some encouragement to you folks. Weep, sing, and do it all in conversation with the God who is able to deliver you from Babylon. In Jesus' name, amen.